Hey, it's Bill the Appliance Guy up here in Northern California. How y'all doing today? Uh, today we're working on this old Maytag. Old school. And basically, it was a gift. It's been sitting for, what, two or three years. We're just going to take it apart, take a look at it. Lube it up. Make sure everything's totally functional. So basically there are two screws on the bottom panel that hold that front panel in and then it hinges from the top so you take those screws out and it'll come out like that and I'll just take it apart and take a look. Okay so there's that front panel. Spider-Man. Uh, see what the spider looks like. Sunshine time. I've been bitten by those spiders. They're, uh, they're not poisonous, although they're, they're like a little mosquito bite. Don't take my word for it, but uh, a friend of mine has been bitten by brown recluses in dryers. Um, and he was like hesitant to uh, get any treatment. And I guess he did survive with uh, uh, major skin mm, problems, but... Uh, he did survive. I had another friend that actually stepped on a brown recluse. This guy, he, he don't want to come out of there, but uh, I'm going to probably turn this upside down and shake him out. I did have a friend who um, stepped on a brown recluse while camping at one time. And uh, oh, he basically, uh, he tried to self-medicate. You know, a little bit of uh, street drugs and uh, herbal medicine didn't quite work for him. So, uh yeah, he had to chop, it basically, it, it rotted his whole foot off, basically, you know. And, uh, so he had, he had to get it chopped off, yeah. Um, and funny thing is, that was his accelerator foot, and he's a mechanic, okay? Put that one together, right? Um, so, anyway, back to the dryer at hand here. So this one here, be careful with these lid switch, door switch wires. Um, they can get kind of tricky. I don't normally pull on them too hard. A lot of times I'll just set the side, set the uh, front panel to the side and leave those connected. Um, so we've got a good lint filter. We're going to have to clean it out a little bit in there. And then these uh, screws come off here and here. And this other front panel comes out. And we can take a look at the innards. Okay, so we got the front panel off. And there was a clump of lint in there that probably came from bottom of that you look here these are the skids that the drum runs on they look good um, still a little bit of lint build up in here it's not a big deal um, definitely want to look at this maybe clean that out so the belt on this is a little bit tricky sometimes so I'm going to go around the back and, and take a look at it we can see that this uh, blower wheel we got a little bit of lint built up on some of the fins. I want to clean that off. And then where this blower wheel hooks into the center here, what happens is sometimes on the dryers, if that blower wheel is not connected to the motor. What happens is the, the, the spline on the plastic blower wheel gives out and this thing will just kind of like rattle and it won't heat very well. You hear kind of a rattle at first or whatever off and on rattle, it eventually gets worse. And it just won't heat very well. Just try it. Close it. Take a long time. And so basically, if this thing, if this blower wheel is loose on the shaft, you, if you do this and the drum doesn't turn, it's starting to turn. I'm not going to tweak on it too hard, but you can see the blower shaft, blower and the shaft are moving at the same time. Basically, um, if they if this blower shaft, if the, excuse me, if the blower is stripped, then you have to get a new one. I have epoxied them back together. Um, I have put hose clamps on them, tighten them up. In a pinch, you can do that for a short time, but you probably want to replace that blower wheel if you have a rattling and it takes too long. So this belt is on here. It's a little bit tricky. Basically, I'm going to go around the back side and show you how that's on here in a minute. So there's that little panel there in the back we have to take off way down there on the bottom, and we'll look inside that. Okay, so we take a look down here. You can kind of see how that belt is on. Goes from this side, this side here, and then wraps around the motor pulley, and then around the big pulley, and then out. 
So what I usually do is I'll mark that on here. Uh, I don't have a felt pen. Sometimes you just take and scratch it in. So we got the drum here. And then we got the belt here. Goes around the motor pulley. That's the motor pulley. And then and it goes around the big pulley. And then back over the drum. Like so. So you got that kind of, you got this mark here. You can figure out how it goes basically. There's the big pulley. That's the belt. Here's the drum. There's the motor pulley right there. So then when you take it off, you know how it goes back on. So basically, let's see. You can do this. So this is uh that's the drum. This is the belt. Belt goes around the motor pulley, small pulley. That's the motor. And then it goes around the big pulley. It goes around the big pulley and then over the drum. It goes just like that basically. And so, yeah, you always want to check that, make sure that pulley's got, it's not squeaking or, or loose. And on this one, basically, the belt has the ribs on the outside. So normally the ribs are on the inside of that belt. Normally the ribs are here, but on this particular Maytag, the ribs, the spline part of the belt is on the outside. So, yeah, that's kind of the difference between these. Usually, like on the Kenmore's and stuff, the rib part is on the inside. So this one, this one has the ribs on the outside. Normally, uh, the ribs are on the inside. Okay. Let's take your parts again some more. <clears throat> okay, so I just want to make a comment. I have another channel, in case you don't know, and I've posted some of my political views and some views about what they're putting in the clouds to make the artificial clouds. And YouTube have, has consistently pulled those videos. So, I never consider YouTube my or any of the platforms the responsibility of my freedom of speech. And so, I yeah, just want to make a note about that. And... Uh, and I, I never monetize any of my videos. I'm not profiting off any of them. Although, what I have started to do, I, I'm starting to um, pull out a couple of points of view that no one gets. And a lot of people, you know, even if you ask the professionals, they don't mess with some of this stuff just because it, it's more cost effective for, for them to just get new stuff replace it and so some of these tricks you just don't get but anyway uh i may add a part two for this one and uh then you'll have to pay for the part two you you'd have to contact me and i would send you a link for 25 dollars if you send me 25 dollars um i will send you the link to the solution to the video and that's how that would work. Uh, P.O. Box 7021, Eureka, California, 95502, Bills Enterprises, 
So if we take this apart and look at it, spin the motor and the blower is fine, right? If we spin this motor, the blower is fine. It's not loose, it's not sloppy, it's fine. And we check these rollers. This one was a little bit stiff, but it's fine. That one is definitely stiff, okay? We're going to have to lube that up. Sometimes you can take a little silicone and put it along this felt here and or some tri-flow on these skids. And then when you pull the uh, drum out, you can see this drum. This is the belt I was talking about. So the splined edge is on the outside. The little grooves are on the outside. And the flat part is what rides on the barrel. And you, you look at this barrel, it looks the same on each side. Um, generally, it doesn't really matter. You can see that this side, one side may be worn more than the other side. Sometimes you can swap them and it doesn't make any difference. But you find have to find a new place for the uh, belt. So, well, basically what I mean, if, you, if, if one side of the drum is worn... So, for instance, if these wore out and then it's got scratches or something on this side, you can flip that whole drum and then use the good side on here. And you don't need any sides for this because these rubber rollers are rolling on it. Um, but anyway, uh, sometimes on some of the models, this will not work. Even though it looks the same, for some reason the belt and the motor pulley do not line up. And so let's see. Yeah, this is pretty much all we got to do for this one. Just lube those rollers and uh, we should be good. Now, this is some lubricant that I use for some of this. It's Dur Dura Lube. And uh, if you Google it, you'll find out more information on it. Um, a friend of mine who was a mechanic turned me on to this. And uh, I believe it. Basically, I mean, it's supposedly they use a variety of this in the in military equipment so uh, I'm sold on that and so they also have a Facebook uh, little page and you can go on that and give them your testimonials but anyway uh, yeah so uh, if DuraLube wants to sponsor me I will go over to my mechanic and 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 make mechanic videos and have them talk about DuraLube as well. Um, so all we have to do is put this back together and then so yeah um, thanks for watching and please contact me if you need any help I give phone advice for $39.707-599-4489 I also have a how to make money in the appliance repair business uh, training course I take two students per year and uh, I give you uh, like uh, 25 years of uh, training experience business experience with the course as well as train you how to do the mechanical stuff so if you're interested please contact me again thanks for watching okay so you take a look down here and you kind of see how that belt is on. Goes from this side, this side here, and then wraps around the motor pulley and then around the big pulley and then out. And what I usually do is I'll mark that on here. Uh, I don't have a felt pin. Sometimes you just take and scratch it in so we got the drum here and then we got the belt here goes around the motor pulley that's the motor pulley and then and it goes around the big pulley and then back over the drum Like so. So you got that kind of, you got this mark here. You can figure out how it goes, basically. There's the big pulley. That's the belt. 
here's the drum there's the motor pulley right there so then when you take it off you know how it goes back on so basically let's see we can do this so this is uh that's the drum this is the belt belt goes around the motor pulley small pulley this is the motor and then it goes around the big pulley it goes around the big pulley and then over the drum it goes just like that basically and so yeah you want to want to check that make sure that pulley's got it's not squeaking or, or loose and on this one basically the belt has the ribs on the outside so normally the ribs are on the inside of that belt normally the ribs are here but on this particular Maytag the ribs the spline part of the belt is on the outside so yeah that's kind of the difference between these usually like kind of Kenmore's and stuff the rib part is on the inside so this one this one has the ribs on the outside normally uh, the ribs are on the inside okay let's take your parts again some more <clears throat> okay so I just want to make a comment I have another channel in case you don't know and I have posted some of my political views and some views about what they're putting in the clouds to make the artificial clouds and YouTube have, has consistently pulled those videos so I never consider YouTube my or any of the platforms the responsibility of my freedom of speech and so yeah, I just want to make a note about that and uh and I, I never monetize any of my videos. I'm not profiting off any of them. Although, what I have started to do, I, I'm starting to um, pull out a couple of points of view that no one gets. And a lot of people, you know, even if you ask the professionals, they don't mess with some of this stuff just because it, it's more cost effective for, for them to just get new stuff, replace it. And so, some of these tricks you just don't get. But anyway... Uh, I may add a part two for this one and uh, then you'll have to pay for the part two you, You'd have to contact me and I would send you the link for $25. If you send me $25 um, I will send you the link to the solution to the video And that's how that would work uh, P.O. Box 7021 Eureka, California 95502 Bills Enterprises So if we take this apart and look at it spin the motor and the blower is fine right we spin this motor the blower is fine it's not loose it's not sloppy it's fine and we check these rollers this one was a little bit stiff but it's fine that one is definitely stiff okay we're gonna have to lube that up sometimes you can take a little silicone and put it along this felt here and or some tri-flow on these skids and then when you pull the uh, drum out you can see this drum this is the belt I was talking about so the splined edge is on the outside the little grooves are on the outside and the flat part is what rides on the barrel and you, you look at this barrel it looks the same on each side um, generally it doesn't really matter you can see that this side one side may be worn more than the other side sometimes you can swap them and it doesn't make any difference but you'll find have to find a new place for the uh, belt so well, basically what I mean if you if, if one side of the drum is worn so for instance if these wore out and then it's got scratches or something on this side you can flip that whole drum and then use the good side on here and you don't need any sides for this because these rubber rollers are rolling on it 
Um, but anyway, uh, sometimes on some of the models, this will not work. Even though it looks the same, for some reason the belt and the motor pulley do not line up. And so let's see. Yeah, this is pretty much all we got to do for this one. Just lube those rollers and uh, we should be good. Now, this is some lubricant that I use for some of this. It's Dur Duralube. And uh, if you Google it, you'll find out more information on it. Um, a friend of mine who was a mechanic turned me on to this and uh, I believe it basically I mean it's, it's supposedly they use a variety of this in the in military equipment so uh, I'm sold on that and so they also have a Facebook uh, little page and you can go on that and give them your testimonials but anyway uh, yeah so uh, if Duralube wants to sponsor me I will go to my, my mechanic and 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 make mechanic videos and have them talk about Dura, Dura Lube as well. Um, so all we have to do is put this back together. And then, so yeah. Um, thanks for watching and please contact me if you need any help. I give phone advice for $39-707-599-4489. I also have a how to make money in the appliance repair business uh, training course. I take two students per year. And... Uh, I give you uh, like uh, 25 years of uh, training experience, business experience with the course, as well as training you how to do the mechanical stuff. So if you're interested, please contact me again. Thanks for watching. Okay, so here's a quick tip <laughs> taught to me by a little old lady. Um, so if you have black marks on your clothes, you look inside your dryer you see little pieces of bubble gum and stuff like this right so what happens is these little pieces of bubble gum and stuff they get they'll heat up and they'll cause problems on your white clothes so I'm gonna try and get this stuff out of here otherwise you have black spots on your white clothes Yeah, just get all that stuff out of there and you won't have little black spots on your white clothes anymore okay so we're putting this belt back on this thing now a couple of things you could check you could do a dry check on these coils uh, the igniter you can check for continuity the flame sensor you should check for continuity it normally has continuity when it's off of course this unit is unplugged this video is for informational purposes. What you do with any of my videos is your uh, responsibility. It's all for entertainment. Uh, okay, so let's uh, let's put that belt back on. So, and you can see this belt here. Again, with the ribs out on these Maytags. And you want to make sure it's not in this groove. You want it on the outside of that groove. Because if it's in the inside of that groove, it's not going to have good tension on it. So, make sure the belt is properly aligned out of that groove. Uh, push it back into there. And push the drum back as far as it will go. And then you can put the belt back on. According, according to that diagram we had before. So... Kind of way in there at this point, and it might be kind of tricky to do with one hand. So I'm gonna just follow the diagram like I put on this paper, and then you'll be able to put the belt back on. Once again, that's the motor. This is a big mo motor pulley. That's the drum. So it goes basically. Okay, so this is gonna be the uh, how to do a quick uh, blower repair on the Maytag. This is gonna be part one. And part two, you're going to have to pay for it. It's 25 bucks. I appreciate it. I don't monetize any of my uh, YouTube videos at all. Um, so, yeah. So this is going to be the quick fix for a noisy Maytag. There are sim other similar models that have this type of blower on it. This is this type of blower that goes in here. Basically, it's going to be part one of part two. Part two, you're going to have to uh, pay for it. You can contact me. Bass Tech 72588.
pay $25 and then uh, I'll send you the link to the quick fix repair video. This video helps when you have a noisy uh, blower wheel and your clothes are not drying or it takes a super long time for the clothes to dry and it goes with gas or electric dryer so please uh, send a donation for part two and then uh, contact me and I will send you the link for part two on how to do a quick fix on the slow heating and noisy dryer video.